Acts Chapel. Good morning. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent. I don't know about you all, but I was glad, as the psalmist says, when they said, let us go into the house of prayer. In the Lord's presence, there's fullness of joy. What did y'all come to do today? To lift up his name, to worship, and to praise him because he's worthy. I don't know about you all, but we started in Sunday school this morning, and we had a blessed time. We had a wonderful time in the Lord, and we're continuing as of now. Our choir is in the law, and the Lord is in this place, and let us just get ready to receive him, to worship him, and to just let him have his way. If you don't mind, let us stand, please, if you will. Yes, yes. And I'll give you a moment to get to your responsive reading, which is found in 1 John 5, 4 through 7. And when you found it, give a heart and praise the Lord, if you will. Amen. Amen. And we'll find these words coming from 1 John 5. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. This is he whom came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not only by water, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who bears witness, because the Spirit is truth altogether. For there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. Amen. And I want you to know, if you've got victory in Jesus, sing this song like you have it. You've got to let this world know that you have victory, and the victory is only in Jesus and in him alone. Doesn't matter what you're facing, what you're going through, or what's coming your way. I want you to know, if you got victory in Jesus, you've got all that you need. Yes, indeed. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, he did. He came from glory. He gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning of his precious blood, the tone. Yes, his blood atoned for us. Yes, I did. Yes, won the victory. Yes. Where's your victory? Yes. Yes, sir. My Savior. Yes. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. His blood. Yes.
Did you? Oh, yes, he did. Oh, yes. My, my, my. Yes. Yes, indeed. They, they sing. Yes. John's story. Yes, sir. Some sweet day I'll sing up there and win the victory. 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 Yes. Ah, oh, yes. Forever. Yes, he did. Good morning, Black's Chapel. What a blessing it is to witness another day, to uh, be able to retrace our tracks back to the Lord's house one more time. The fourth Sunday of a brand new, first fourth Sunday of a brand new year. You know, so often we, we, we go through life and we're concerned about what's gonna happen tomorrow, or next week, or next year, or down the road. But I'm here to tell you that the Lord gives us one day at a time and just turn it over to him and, and just put it in his head and he'll work it out. It's now time for our, the morning prayer. We ask that you join with us. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. We come in the spirit of thanksgiving. Father, first of all, we thank you for the gift of creation. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the breath of life. Heavenly Father, we come acknowledging, acknowledging you as the first and the last the Omega, Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end. Father, we come thanking you for our lying down last night and our rising up this morning. Help, help the Father, you woke us up with food over on our table and clothes and a roof over our head, and clothes on our backs, Heavenly Father. Giving us a mind and a will and a desire to come out and bless and worship you this morning. Father, we thank you for every household and every individual here this morning, Heavenly Father. We thank you for those that uh, we're not able to come, but maybe help the Father be that will that they will be able to make it next time. Father, we just pray that you bless each and every one of us, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for every every congregation and every house, every church door that's open wide in your name, Heavenly Father. Father, we pray that you continue to bless us, continue to give us a will to serve and to do that which you would have us to do. Father, we pray that you strengthen us where we weak, fill us up where we torn down. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you bless those that are sick and afflicted. Heavenly Father, comfort those that are bereaved, Heavenly Father. Those that have lost loved ones, loved ones that have fallen to the call of death. Comfort them and let them know that the earth has no hurt, pain, or sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Father, we pray that you strengthen us where we will, we can get and build us up where we torn down. Heavenly Father, we, we pray, pray, Heavenly Father, that you bless those that are in the nursing homes, convalescent homes, Heavenly Father. We lift those up, Heavenly Father, that are incarcerated. Father, we pray that you continue to strengthen us and, and forgive us of our sins. Heavenly Father, we just take every single sin and cast it into a sea of forgiveness. And we may sin no more and become the children that you have us to be. Heavenly Father, we pray that you will help us to be receptive to that word as man come, comes forth and bring, breaks the bread of life. We pray that, Heavenly Father, that every year will be a list in here. And we will apply the word in our everyday life. Heavenly Father, Father, we need you. We need you and we can't get along without you, Heavenly Father. We pray that this strength of Heavenly Father that we may be able to walk on through temptation and become the children that you would have us to be. And as we go through the service this morning, we pray that something will be said, something that will be done that will please them in your sight. And we be careful to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen. This, this now concludes our morning devotion.
you ought to open your mouth and say something. See, if you're going to say anything, say something pertaining to what this great God of ours is. What he has done and all that he's going to do for us in this new year. Hey, let's give our young people another hand. I tell you. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Open your mouth and say something. Stop talking all this negativity and all this other stuff. Speak life into your situation. Let the purpose of God come out of you, come out of your lips, out of your being. Give him what's due to him. And we greet you in his, the precious name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus. In the absence of our pastor, at this time, we certainly thank God for everyone that's visiting with us, that's here in this place that's here in the congregation that's not on Black's Chapel's Road. We thank God for you. We just ask that you would just go in prayer with us, that you would just <clears throat> help us in our endeavors to lift up this great God of ours. And those of you that are listening at home, I want you to know, as the pastor would say, your place is here if you can be here. If not, then so you continue to listen by internet or what have you. But God wants you back into the house of prayer. And we, we just lift up his name today. We give him thanks. We give him honor. We give him all the praise that's due him because he is worthy of our praises. We here at this church behind our pastor believe that we worship this great God of ours. We praise this great God of ours because he deserves all the praise, the glory, and all the honor. We certainly thank God for you. And if there be anybody in our sanctuary whose name is not on Black Chapel's roll, if you don't mind standing, we just want to acknowledge your presence because we know you could have been anywhere. You didn't have to be here, but we thank God that you are here and you're worshiping with us. And we certainly thank God for you. Oh, bless the Lord. Then it, everybody that's here is at home. And that, that's a good thing, to be in the house of prayer, to be back at home. As the pastor would say, there's no place like home. And at this time, we're going to have our announcer. She's here, Sister Love, and she's going to give us our announcements. And take heart to these announcements, if you will, please. Good morning again, Black's Chapel. Good morning. Our announcements are as follows. Please plan to attend a business meeting on Sunday, January 29th, immediately after service. This meeting is for members only. Therefore, we're asking all visitors to leave the sanctuary immediately after service. Thank you for your cooperation. Again, that's next Sunday, immediately after service. Amen. You are invited to join us for a community credit workshop, February 11th, 845 to 12 noon. To register, please call the church office at 601-922-5090. For additional information, please contact Brother Rico Wells at 601-454-3888. Also, flyers will be available today. Lynch Street Young Adult Ministry Talent Explosion is Saturday, February 4th at 1 p.m. Calling all praise dancers, mimes, poets, choirs, soloists, artists, and etc. For more information, please call 601-352-8886. Our church prayer list, we have Zachary Robinson. And please be in prayer for Brother Levi Anderson's family in his demise, Brother James Ransberg, demise of his sister, Barbara Ransberg, Kansas City, Missouri, Sister Mary Cooper, that's mother of Dennis Williams, Deacon Charles and Sister Madeline Bell, Tyler Pfizer, nephew of Mother Wyndham and Deacon Melvin Pfizer, Brother Turner Curry, Brother Joshua Henderson, Sister Jesse Bell Williams, mother of Brother Curtis Watson. And please be in prayer for all our members that we are unaware of. Our birthdays for this week, on Monday we have Sister Marjorie Barnes, on the 24th, Christopher Pendleton Jr., on the 25th, Kinsley Harper Love, and on the 28th, Reverend Dr. David Carr. Happy birthday, members. <laughs> Thank you.
these are our announcements. Please have a great week. And I just have, want to elaborate just a little bit more on the uh, meeting coming up uh, next Sunday. Again, the business meeting is going to focus on just two issues. Uh, one, we're going to give you our financial report so everyone will be aware of where we are and uh, how well we're doing. And also, uh, we're going to discuss our pathway forward on that heating and cooling uh, system. Uh, a member, I ran to a member sometime th this week. They reminded me, look, anytime we discussing or, or, or getting ready to make major decisions as a church body, we need to make sure that we go into prayer. So I'm just up here to ask you all this week, uh, find a time that works for you all and go into prayer uh, about, not just about, you know, this heating and cooling system, but about, uh, you know, the pathway forward for the ministry and our community around us and all as well. So just want to make sure that uh, you all pick a time that's convenient for you uh, this week, and we're going to pray all throughout the week as a Blacks Chapel church family. And uh, we'll see you all uh, Sunday immediately following service for our business meeting. Thank you.
Amen. We are now at the point of our service where we bless the Lord through our giving. And I've come to find out that you can't be God-given. If you give, I've, I've also found out that you never have to do it down. I've had people tell me, you can't you give that much? That's a lot. That's too much. But I found out, you know, you can't be God-given. I've never had to go to anybody to, uh, for anything. Um, I never, if I missed the meal, it's because I forgot. It wasn't because I didn't have it. So <laughs> that, that happens too. <laughs> As you know, we have several ways of uh, receiving offerings. Uh, the Give the Five link is, is located on, on the church's webpage, and also we have the wet, do, uh, drop box on the west end of the building if you can't worship with us in person. And now, and now we're in the hands of our ushers. Let us stand, if we will, please. Let us pray. Our Father God, we come at this hour and at this time. We certainly thank you for this offering that was just taken. We know, Father, that you are going to bless it. We pray for those that gave with a cheerful heart, for as you love a cheerful giver with a cheerful heart. Bless those that even had the desire to give this time but had not the funds. On the next go-round, Father, bless them that they will be able to give, and even those that are at home as well, Lord. Help them, Father, and keep them and bless them. And at this time, Father, we pause to 
pray, Father, for those that are on our sick and our shut-in list, Father. Those that are abroad as well, we pray that your mighty hands of mercy and grace would touch them. Father, our members and other members, the Bells, Brother Henderson, certain others, Father, that are on our, our sick and shut-in list. Those, Father God, that are abroad as well. Those that are bereaving at this time. We lift up the Anderson family at this time and other families, Father, that you would bless them and strengthen them. Give them the peace, Father, that surpasses all understanding. And Father, at this time, those also that are incarcerated, be it physically, spiritually, or mentally, help us, Father, because we find ourselves in some capacity. Keep, Father, as only you can. Let your love, your mercy, and your grace bless us as only you can. And for this, we'll give you the praise, the honor, and all the glory that's due to you. In the absence of our pastor, keep him as well, Lord, and just bless them and give them safe return as well. These are all blessings we do ask in the rich, the mighty, the powerful, and the matchless name of Jesus this day. We do pray. Amen and amen. All things. Come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own. choir is going to get ready to come with our last election, but before they come, I want to say this, that we, in the absence of our pastor today, the Lord and our pastor has left us with one of our very own, and that is Reverend Cole, and I want you all to pray with him as the pastor would say if he was here, pray for him, and we just want him to know that we are here with him, and we are going to be praying with him and for him, and we're going to give attentive to what he says, what thus says the Lord says for him to say to us because we need a word and we know that God is going to give us a word through him. And also keep in mind that our very own dear brother Levi Anderson transitioned on yesterday, I believe, and went on to glory. And we have to be thankful, we have to be hopeful, and we have to be prayerful for him and for his family as well. And those that are truthfully on our sick, sick and shut-in list, Brother Bell, Sister Bell, they are being blessed. God is keeping them. Brother Henderson, we don't want to forget Sister Gwen. Brother Bennett is at home today a little under the weather. But everybody that you know and that you can think of, put them on the prayer list and keep them there and pray. And as Deacon Latica said earlier, Dr. Latica rather, go in prayer. Somebody said prayer still works. Prayer never stopped working. It's us that stop. You go to God and those of you that are truthfully and sincere, as the Sunday school lesson said this morning, and you pray about every situation. Stop talking about people and situations and things and pray about them. If you pray honestly to an honest God, he'll bless, he'll secure, he'll keep, he'll protect. Now, that's what he told us that he would do, and that's what he has done for us. Stop all this foolishness. I'm not fussing, but I'm just saying. And we'll grow up. These young people need to see us growing up. And when we grow up in the grace and the admonition of God, I believe I'm, I'm right, Mother. If we grow up in the nurture and the admonition of God, then we become strong people in God. We become the people that God has called us to be. doesn't matter what has happened in the past or what, what isn't happening right now. We have to be mindful of this God that we serve. He'll keep us. He'll protect us. He's a faithful God. He's not a man that he should lie. He's never lied and never left anyone down. He's always kept us. So we need to keep our word to him. And if we do that, he will bless us and he'll keep us. And I believe our speaker is here now. Like I say, after our message through song from the choir, he's going to come and he's going to bless us. And I want y'all to give him y'all's undivided attention because he's going to tell us the truth. I know this is my brother that's in the gospel with me. He labors here with us. And he has your best interest after God's own heart in his hand and in his mind. And with that being said, our choir is going to come. And once again, we're going to have our very own Reverend Cole who's going to come and break the bread of life to us. And we're going to just raise our right hand as our pastor was saying. We're going to encourage him. Speak the word, Brother Reverend Cole. Speak the word, Reverend Cole. And we're going to be there to support you. And, we're gonna be there to support you. and we know the spirit is going to lead you and guide you. In Jesus' name.
Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Yes, we do.
Amen, amen, amen. Good God Almighty. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, praise his holy name. And for his goodness and for his mercy toward us. Oh, he's good to us. And we ought to be glad about it. We ought to be glad about it. He's good to us. In spite of ourselves, he's good to us. Oh, yes, he is. We thank God. Oh, yeah, we thank him. We thank him for his goodness and his mercy. Deacon Ross toward us. Oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and all that is within me. We're going to bless his holy name here today. Amen. I want to thank God for this opportunity. Uh, thank God for our pastor and first lady and the pastor of this fine church. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge all of our ministers, uh, Reverend Thompson, and all the ministers on the ra uh, roster here, uh, Reverend Handy and Reverend, uh, Reverend, um, Reverend Mayberry, and uh, that's not the one I was thinking of, though. I'm thinking about Rattler. I know Mayberry. I see him over there, but uh, let's continue to uh, keep Reverend Rattler lifted up also. Amen. Uh, to the mother board, the deacon trustee board, and all the members here. I just want to thank God for you, all of our evangelists. I want to acknowledge my wife here, Evangelist Tammy Cole. Let's give her a hand clap of praise. Thank God for her. And uh, y'all keep praying for her now. Y'all keep praying for her. And me and my family. Amen? Amen. God is a good God. He's worthy to be praised. He's uh, uh, done so much for us. He's brought us uh, up into this point in our lives. Uh, we're going to thank him for all he's done, all he's doing, and all he's going to do. Amen? Amen. You all pray along with me. I uh, considered some things and uh, I was kind of, you know, uh, a little anxious. You know, I had to remember the scripture says, be anxious for nothing. Uh, but in all things, I'm to pray about it and, uh, and uh, seek God for advice and uh, he'll guide you to where you need to be. And particularly when you are getting ready to uh, give a word uh, from the Lord to his people. And so then, uh, uh, if you will, <clears throat> I receive that. All of you all that are able to stand, if you stand just briefly, uh, with me and I won't keep you standing long uh, if you have your Bibles with you um, um, you're able to stand for the reading of God's word I'd like for you to stand and uh, turn your Bibles to the 24th number of Psalms Once everyone has found the 24th number of Psalms, and the first verse is where I'll be reading from. Um, once the church has found that passage of Scripture, let the church say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And it reads as follows. The earth is the Lord's. and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. You may be seated. This is one of my favorite scriptures in the compilation of the book of Psalms. 
you know, it's a very, very powerful word right there. I want to talk a little bit about the Psalms and that particular one using a subject of thought. It all belongs to the Lord. Just a little bit of vital statistics about the Psalms. They were given and written to provide portrait for the expression of praise. Worship and confession. I have witnessed and I have come to understand and been a part of a lot of praise and worshiping. But I hadn't heard that much about confession. For the Bible tells us that we all have sinned. And come short of his glory. There's some things that we're going to have to do. In order to hear from the Lord. With the aid of the Holy Ghost. I pray right now that. The words of my mouth. And the meditation of my heart. Be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. That's the 19th number of Psalms in the 14th verse. There are 150 number of Psalms recorded in the Holy Bible. The, ver the first Psalm speaks of the man who is blessed. Or, in other words, the faithful and the unfaithful. And the 150 number of Psalms speaks of the God that is to be praised for his goodness, for his mercy toward us. But what I wanted to let us know this morning, and what God wanted to let us know is that David wrote 73 psalms, Asaph wrote 12, the sons of Korah wrote 9, Solomon wrote 2. Heman, with the sons of Korah, Ethan, and Moses each wrote 1. And 51 psalms are anonymous. And so I was led to the 24th number of Psalms. Yes, the earth is the Lord's. Yes, and the fool is thereof. Yes, <laughs> the world and they that dwell therein. Oh, yeah. Now what he's saying here. And this psalm is getting prepared. And I'm going to try with the Holy Spirit assistance to give us what this is saying to us. Because some of us think some of these things belongs to us. We didn't get off track. We think our spouses, our children, our jobs, even our churches belong to us. Don't let him have to show you who they belong to. God is love. And everything God made was good and very good. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. That situation that you're facing, that situation that you're dealing with, it belongs to the Lord. When he's taking you through things, 
that's making you very uncomfortable. That thing belongs to the Lord. When he washes some of us, you might not like the way it feels, the way he's scrubbing on you. He may be scrubbing on you with a situation that you can't stand. Your child might be disobedient unto you. Your spouse might be aggravating you. Your job. You might not can't stand nobody on it. And they can't stand you. But the Lord is working something out. Because the earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. Don't nothing belong to us. Not even our own lives. Some of us think because we got a bank account that we can call shots. You ain't calling nothing but what he allow you to call. For you see, he has a permissive will and he has a divine will. You may think you're getting by with something. But he says, be not deceived. For God is not more. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. This is what I like when he says. Do not touch my anointing. If you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you've gotten yourself involved with a teaching ministry and you're studying to show yourself approved that a workman needed not be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. You want a God's anointed. If you have a desire to follow him you want a God's anointed if you have accepted his son, Jesus Christ, as your Lord and Savior. For you said he... He has told us that he's not going to put no more on us than we can bear. Now, when you're going through these things, there are some things you must do. Continue to seek him. And then what you're going to have to do, you're going to have to respond to those things, as our pastor would always tell us, whereby God will get the glory out of whatever it is that's happening in your life. God want everything good and very good for all of his children. I know I want that for mine. But when they are disobedient, they must be chastised. And God chastises those whom he loves. God has an order. He has an order when you come into his house. When he say come into his house and make a joyful noise unto him, that's what he means. And so then we're going to have to start realizing whose house we coming to. You can't come to anybody's house and disrespect them any kind of old way. You have to come to God's house and reverence him. You got to know who house this is. This is not our house. This is a holy place that's been set aside where we can come and get our prayers answered. 
But in order for us to get our prayers answered, we're going to have to do three things. Worship, praise, and confess. We ain't got no problem with singing. We don't have no problem with clapping our hands. We got a big problem of telling them what we did last night. What's up in our minds as we come to his church? He already know. He know what you're going to do before you even do it. He knows what you will do, what you won't do. Who don't want to know a God like this? Only a fool would say there is no God when he has brought us this far. Just look back over your life and see how God has blessed you. He's brought you to this point from your mother's womb. And he's going to keep you for as long as he want to keep you on this earth. For in the book of Ecclesiastics, it says that in three and one, there's a time and season for every purpose under the heavens. Then over in Romans, the word of God tells us that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. To them who are the called according to his purpose. All of us are different. All of us don't possess the same qualities. I was thinking the other day, or actually it was yesterday, about the equine horses. There are seven different types of breeds of horses. Just to name a few, there's the Arabian horse. There's the Tennessee Walker. You got stallions. You got a mule. A mule ain't good for nothing but eating and pulling a plow. But a Tennessee Walker. He prances around like a J-set. <laughs> he don't eat what a mule eat. <laughs> what he eat costs more than what we eat. <laughs> they rub him down. A horse is mystic. He's a mysterious animal. And when you see one that's right, his muscles, the way he carry himself. But they all have one thing in common. They must be broke. And they must be trained. As the Bible says, train up a child. In the same way that he should go, and when he get old, he will not depart from it. God is so good to us that he permits us. He's not going to interfere with what you want to do because he loves you so much. There were two thieves hanging on the cross with Jesus Christ when he was being crucified. One of them had the audacity to ask Jesus, mm, if you be who you say you are, won't you get us all down from here? That wasn't his purpose. And the other thief 
They both were thieves now. It's like we all sinners. They both were thieves, but one thief said, with what's going on and what I'm observing here, I'm paraphrasing now, he must be the son of God. And Jesus' response to him was, this day, you, sinner, will be with me in paradise. And so then now for us, the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life to them that believe. You must believe the word of God. For the, God, for the word of God works the way he says it'll work if we work it. The reason why so many Christians today are living beneath their privileges is because they are leaning toward their own understanding about everything. When the word of God teaches us in, in Proverbs 3 and 5, it says, trust in the Lord with all of our heart and lean not to your own understanding. But in all of our ways, we are to acknowledge him and he's going to direct our path. I want to share with you that I know that there are some things that we all are going through. But we have been sh shaped in iniquity. Yeah, all. Yeah, we all have been born in sin. So we are all sinners because we sin by omission and commission. But now when you come to God's church that's been set aside for you to confess your sins, praise him, worship him, he's faithful to hear your prayer. And he will answer your prayer. Because you're looking at someone now who didn't actually have a relationship with him at one time. And I had, to, I had sense enough to call on him. Found myself in a situation where I had no business in. And the only thing I could do was say, Lord, have mercy. And I want to tell you, he had mercy on me. I'm talking about immediately. I'm talking about immediately. He had mercy on me. And he turned that thing another way. Good God Almighty. Do I have a witness in this house? Has he ever turned that thing another way for you? Has he ever made a way out of no way for you? Have you ever got a check in the mail when you think you wasn't going to get one? Have you ever been sick and the doctor said you wasn't going to get healed and he healed you? Have you ever? Yeah, 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 yeah. My brothers and my sisters on this journey, as the songwriter says, it gets hard sometimes. But you got to be willing with a made up mind. That you're going to follow Jesus. Last week the minister told us that irregardless of what you go through. He still got us in his hand. No matter what it is that you're going through. He got you in his hands. And we want to stay tied up in his hand. We want to be found steadfast, unmovable always abound in the works of the Lord because that's our only and our righteous way to do that which he would have us to do. Oftentimes you may think you know what you're doing but if he don't give you a mind to do what's right you'll find yourself doing some of everything. Your adversary come to steal, kill, and destroy. But he came to give us life. 
life more abundantly. Bless his name in this house this morning. Don't you go out of here the same way you came in here. Know that when you come to the house of the Lord, that you come to get some word. He said, forsake not yourselves of assembly, as such are the manner of some are. He wants to trick you out of the church. One thing I heard some ministers speaking of a couple of weeks ago, they said it's been said that the, the only place that you can catch COVID is at church. You can't catch it at Walmart. You can't catch it on your job. You can't catch it at the ball game. But if you go to church, you can catch COVID. That's the biggest lie that the devil has ever told the people of God. It only gave you or gave them an excuse not to come to God's house. Well, they wouldn't come into God's house no way. They were coming to what they perceived to be God's house. For you see, perception is reality, but it's not necessarily the truth. You can appear to be doing something, and you ain't doing that at all. It's like he knows when you are sincerely worshiping him. He knows when we are sincerely praising him because you ain't confessed not one thing. And listen, you don't have to outwardly confess where your neighbor here, he hears you uh, silently. You can go to him and tell him, See this thing, this thing, this see, 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 there's a mystery. And see, he don't he don't reveal these mysteries to everybody. See, there's a reason why some people can go to the same church for 30 years. There's a reason why somebody can work on their job for the same job for 30 years. There's a reason why somebody can stay married to the same person for 30 some years. It's a mystery. Some folk can't put up with nothing. Some folk can't stand nothing. Well, you ain't going to get nothing. You're going to keep going round and round and round and round because you can't put up with nothing. You see, that word of God says he's long-suffering toward us. Yeah, he's merciful because he loves us like that, Deacon Brown. Oh, yeah. He loves us like that. Ain't this a God you want to get to know? Ain't this a God you like to have a relationship with? Don't you know? When they carried Jesus from judgment hall to judgment hall, when they whipped him and they spat on him and they talked about him and cursed him and whipped him and beat him down, they beat him so bad that one of his chief disciples, Peter, said, I ain't with him. He had already told Peter that he was going to deny him three times. And Peter was like, who are you talking about? And he did that. Because when he saw and what he perceived what was going down, he didn't want that to happen to him. He even cursed woman asked him, you, you, that was you. You were with him. You sound like him. You kind of look like him. And I know that was you. And Peter said, didn't I tell you I wasn't with him? We don't want to be found saying we ain't with him. He said he'd never leave us nor forsake us. And so then we want to continue to praise him and worship him. Watch this right here. He allows us to do that which we think we ought to be doing. He know what you like. 
He don't mind you having it because he says that if you delight yourself in the Lord, that he would give you the desires of your heart. Psalms 37 and 4. The book of Psalms, once again, was written to give praise, worship, and confession unto the Lord. But this 24th number of Psalms that says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein, for he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the flood. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart. Who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord. So you want to be found doing that, what the Lord would have you to do. And I'm not going to hold you long, but I got to share with you what the 23rd number of Psalms says. It says that the Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. This is a psalm that we often hear when we're marching in for a funeral. <laughs> he said he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Oh, he know how to make you lie down in the green pastures. He'll lead you beside the still water. And then when you get out around with him, he'll restore your soul. He'll lead you in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Oh, yes, he will. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I ain't going to feel no evil because the Lord is with me. His rod and his staff, they comfort me. Look at him. Oh, thou prepare the table before me in the presence of my enemy. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me for the rest of my life. Bless his holy name. Let's give him a hand clap of praise in his house. Surely, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us for the rest of our lives. Let's continue to love one another and do those things that God would have us to do. Oh, he's so merciful unto us. Don't you let your adversary trick you. Well, he come to stop you from worshiping and praising the almighty God. God is who he say he is. He's the beginning and he's the end. And look what he done for us. He died for our souls. He died and he rose with all power power over anything that keeps us inconsistent with him. So let's keep on loving, keep on giving, and keep on praising, keep on worshiping, and confess to him when you get out around with him. He know what you done done. Tell him what you done done. Tell him I'm sorry. Help me, Lord. Help me with my vices. Those things that keep me inconsistent with your will and your way. Bless his holy name. The God we serve. The earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. The doors of the church are open. Letter, Christian experience, or candidate to be baptized. We're going to open the door to God's house. If you haven't confessed your sins and you haven't accepted Jesus Christ in the pardon of your sins, now is the time that you can do that. By letter, Christian experience, or as a candidate to be baptized. For the earth 
is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. This 24th number of Psalms was sung back in the biblical days in Israel when they got ready to come in and worship and praise the holy God. It was so significant, and they really wanted their children to be there, because you all know that the Psalms are songs, they're poetry, and they sang this, as I saw, uh, on the first week of each month at the temple, and as they prepared to open the gates, and they said, the king of glory. Open ye gates, and the king of glory shall come in. And the question was, who is this king of glory? And the answer was, the Lord of hosts, the Lord Almighty. He is the king of glory. There ain't no kings around here that we fictitiously made. There's only one king. That's the Lord Almighty. He sent his son here, that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Let's give him a hand clap of praise. I just want to thank God for all he said and all he's done. This fourth Sunday in the year, our Lord, 2023. We started out beginning of the year in our Sunday school. We said one of our main focus was going to be was to focus back on God. We weren't trying to say we weren't going to try to make no New Year's resolutions. We're going to stop eating because I ain't. We ain't going to stop watching the Cowboys because I'm, I'm going to watch them. God knows what you like. God knows what you will do and what you won't do. He don't mind you doing what you like to do. Just keep him first. Give and it should be given on to you. Y'all come out and visit us in Sunday school sometime. We have a good time in Sunday school, don't we, Sister Tate? Don't we, Deacon? We have a good time in Sunday school. We, we, we don't keep you but 45 minutes to an hour. We have some excellent teachers. We have uh, 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 input from all of our brothers and sisters who come out and worship with us. And we get started. Yeah, we get started at 9.30 a.m. every morning. And so don't let nobody trick you. Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. Yeah, because we winding it up at 9.30. <laughs> Y'all hitting that bell on me <laughs> when I start. But we thank and praise God for all that's been said and done today. We thank you for all of you all who have come out and witnessed and heard the word of God. We ask you now that you keep praying I hope and pray that we keep the uh, Anderson family lifted up. Uh, did we mention our beloved deacon Levi Anderson was called home to glory? And uh, let's continue to lift up all those who are in bereavement. Let's continue to lift up our pastor and his family. We love our pastor. We thank him for this opportunity. We thank him for all that he's done for us. Let's give God a hand clap of praise for our pastor. And it's a blessing to have someone who's steadfast, unmovable, always abound in the works of the Lord. Now, if there's no other, uh, if all hearts are satisfied, rather. I want to say one other thing, you know, and I'm going to let you go. The Lord is like a conductor. He's conducting everything that go on. You know, he's like a, a musical conductor. I, I thought I wanted to be a conductor once. 
because, because, because what, what I do, if you watch me sometimes here, the musicians, when they're closing us out, I get over here and I do this. <laughs> you know, I try to conduct. <laughs> and those of you all who think you know me, y'all know that I, I'm, a jo I'm a joyful man. I like to laugh. I like to have fun. I ain't, I ain't no mean, hateful guy. You can tell when something's wrong with me. My, I get to frowning up, but I don't be mean and no harm. I just don't like to see no unrighteousness. Now that does something to me. But what God is working with me on is the battle is not mine. It's the Lord's. Let's stand for our closing song and benediction. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit and the love of God, rest, rule, and abide with us now henceforth and forevermore until we meet again. Let us all say, Amen. Amen. Shake someone's hand, bump someone's finger. Amen. <laughs> <laughs>